which is our target this is our target yeah that's Dino scrap and here you can sort of see what's happening we're coming up we're in a bigger orbit so we're gonna be going slower and that's gonna allow Dino to come around and catch up with us but around a quarter of an orbit ahead of this in, in um, this this encounter I'll make a correction here always find that's a good place to do it yeah, let's pause it here or not pause but just slow things down add a maneuver okay let's play around with let's actually do this on a fine scale does normal up make it better it makes it better so we'll do some normal positive normals oh that's starting to get worse so then we'll do a little bit of do I do radial or retrograde? Oh, retrograde makes a big difference. Oh, that made too much of a difference. All I'm doing is looking at this number here and seeing, does this make it better or worse? If it makes it better, I just give it more of that. Oh, I'm looking over at this side now. It just switched to intersect two. So, oh, oh, started getting worse. So back to the normal, that's making it better. and oh, 300 meters 200 meters oh that's starting to get worse again you know what this vessel doesn't have is rcs for really fine that's good enough 50 58 meters so i got this burn coming up in just a little bit let's time warp to that I recommend a thermal view. I have no idea, Nathan, what thermal view is. What is thermal view? Stick that onto. Or do you mean like whatever it is, like when you do this? <laughs> thermal view? Uh, okay, we got a few seconds to the burn here. Not going to give it a lot of throttle. I think that's heavier going below us right now. No rush. Okay, we're under a kilometer. Oh, I gotta be careful too with how many ignitions do I still got? I got 17 ignitions. There is a limited number of ignitions, so I gotta be, oh, okay, that's it, stop it. Not quite what I wanted, but it's good enough, okay. Let's hook this on the target, get ourselves a little closer. Yes, the thermal view. So this is thermal view like this. Oh, so when you're in the night side, did you can see it a little better? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Weird time warping thing. I don't like that. Weird time warping thing. Okay, let's time warp to where a couple of minutes away. Yeah, it's, it's seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah, just spin. That's better. That is a weird time warping thing it does. So I'm just here looking at my time to intercept. Four minutes. Three minutes. Stop this. Stop this. Cre oh, now it's 22 seconds. What the heck? Ah, burn, baby, burn. I don't even see where it is, but I'm just going by the numbers. Cut. <laughs> where is it? We must have been really close. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was a panic. The, time, the numbers here were lying to me. Okay, let's uh, aim at our target and we'll... I slowed down a little too much. Actually, maybe not. Let's go back. Because we're approaching at a reasonable clip. Let's see here. Does this make it better? Yeah. No, it makes it worse. Shoot. Maybe I'll do this with a node. Where? There's our intercept way over here. 
All right, so sorry about that. Um, what's our periapsis? Our periapsis is in the atmosphere. Oh my gosh, I really botched this. Okay. Um... Our periapsis is 61 kilometers. So what I'm considering... Again, let's look at our ignitions. 14 ignitions. Okay, let's get our periapsis up a little bit. And this is just brute forcing that periapsis up. Maybe a little more prograde is a better, better idea. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Now it's at 66 kilometers, but... Ow! It's the time warp trap. Yeah. So, all I want to do is get my periapsis up high enough that I can get through without losing too much orbital altitude, and then we'll reassess. There, we're now in the atmosphere. We'll reassess... Um, let's point prograde to at least minimize our drag. We'll reassess our situation on the other side, but... Ah! Ah! I got caught in the time warp trap. Now, I don't know. We're, we're around it. It's still around us somewhere. I just want to get out of the atmosphere. Before, and it, Okay, these encounters here are still ahead of us, so I think I can still finagle this. Boy, you can see my apoapsis is dropping. That drops below 80, I'm in a lot of, or below 70, I'm in a lot of trouble, but I don't think it will. Ah! <laughs> Jason Barr Rescue. I'm not quite sure as to the reference for that one. Okay, we're coming back up now. Still ahead of us. And we're still catching up to it, so... Oh, the sun's coming up, too, so that's nice. And Tom warping as fast as I can. In real life, they don't launch into... Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not sure, uh, Jack, what you mean by a direct insertion. Um... So, if you mean directly into an encounter, into a rendezvous, then definitely not. That is not the normal way in which they do it. Okay, back in space, back in space, back in space. But given, again, I'll just say it once again, trying to get into low Earth orbit, launching from Cape Canaveral, forces you to make a plane change forces you to in one way or another you have to make it you cannot go directly into an equatorial orbit launching from anywhere else but the equator that's just that's just reality that's just life uh physics just won't let that happen okay i gotta i gotta somehow make this better okay that's making it better right maybe might have to use some radialness here. Oh, this is way too small. Uh. Nope, it's getting worse now that way. This way. When's this burn coming up? I think I got to get some radial going. Yep, but I think it's got to be radially in. I, I'm using a maneuver node because I don't want to guess which way to burn. Oh, these the way they're jumping around is getting on my nerves. Here we go. Because I have limited ignitions. Okay, I saw 1.7 kilometers. Yeah, the... the And then normal. 
One thing to look at with the normal is if the AN and DN are near where your encounter is. If they are, then you're doing a good thing. There we go. I got a hundred meter separation. Let's do this burn. Um, my periapsis is, is still in the atmosphere, but it's behind us. So that should be okay. And oh shoot, the burn's behind me. <laughs> uh, let's, let's just really quickly fix that. I should have to go to this view. Okay, let's get her done. And next time I'm going to be careful with my time warping. Next time I'm going to be careful with that time warping. So, yeah, that wasn't an actually an inspiring rendezvous, was it? Okay. I got 720 meters. That's good enough for now. And this time, so when you time, you know what, I'm going to time warp from out here. I'm noticing it's not really changing. But sometimes these encounters change when you time warp. That's what got me, I'm pretty sure. And then I did a panic burn. There, there, see how they change? And if I take the time warp off, they bounce back. So it's saying this right now. It's in 2 minutes and 58 seconds. And as soon as I time warp... They change. Very annoying. Okay. Oh, this should be on target, silly. We'll get to you eventually, Javier. Where is he? Thankfully, you have a lot of Delta V. That is really what's saving my butt. How many ignitions left here now? 11 ignitions, so let's let's be calm about this. Let's do a little burn. Okay, that's bringing down the encounter distance. And we'll bring down this thrust limiter again. Whew. When time warping, click on the orbit and warp to here so it doesn't cause that issue. Yeah, I've also used, if you use alarm clock, it can uh, you can avoid the issue too. If you use alarm clock and time warp to, you know, say, time warp till three, you know, use the alarm clock and get the maneuver indicator you're at an alarm, click on maneuver indicators and say stop like three minutes ahead of time. That that prevents it too. It's just sometimes I get lazy. We all get lazy sometimes. Should be better now. Now I had a whole plan to get into high space with this mission too because I do have some science to do in high space. I'm debating though whether to just launch another spacecraft for it. And I think I should. And just get heavier down. All right, less than 30 meter separation. Oh, this stuff comes up because Dino just got, I said Javier, but Dino just got uh, rendered. And this is like, oh my gosh, he's out of all of these things. And then suddenly it says, relax, he's okay. <laughs> so it's it's sort of funny. That's Kerbalism panicking when he first renders. That it thinks that it doesn't he doesn't have any of those supplies. And then it turns out, oh no, wait, hang on. It's okay, he does have all those things. We're all good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I think I'm going to scrap the high space portion of this mission. I think we got... Uh, I'm worried about getting them to high space and then not... I'll launch a fresh a vehicle. I think that's a better plan. Okay, a little bit more burn in here. 
pushing that retro gray towards the anti-target icon. Beautiful. Oh, is it Javier instead of Javier? That's entirely likely on my part. <laughs> All right. Again, funky time warping things happening. Oh, I think I know why then when I time warp, why this happens. It's because I am locked to the anti-target icon. Retrograde icon relative to the target. And I think what's happening is uh, it's locked on that and so it's jumping over to that. Well, we're there now. What's our orbit look like? Oh, we must be in a good orbit because Javier was in a uh, stable orbit to begin with. So our orbits are fine. Our orbit's now fine. There we go. That's good enough. All right, let's get over to Javier here. Or Dino, I keep saying that. Dino, we just read... And Dino's another scientist. So we got lots and lots of scientists. So I guess there's that. Okay, we're going to EVA. Put on our lights. Oh, let go. Oh, RCS on. And there we go. No, he's not letting... Let go. Okay, let's get out of here. Where is our ship? Right above us.